Here's a segment where my wife is now turning the TV to another <laughs> channel, but that's okay. We have, um, we have a snake and we have a herpetologist with us today. And Doug Hodel has been with us before. Welcome back to The Morning Brew. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing great. Good. Glad to be here this morning. Good We're to have you. To uh, Doug is the curator of herpetology at the Albuquerque Biopark. Herpetology is basically snakes. Yeah, reptile, yeah. the study Reptiles. of reptiles and amphibians. Yeah, and you got a reptile with you here today. I, I certainly He's do. Beautiful. Look at him. Yeah. Isn't he? This is an albino Burmese python, uh, meaning they've got a recessive gene that they, there's no pigment whatsoever in this snake. So normally it wouldn't look like this. He's uh, so photogenic. Yeah, isn't he great? Uh, how much Hi. does he weigh? How big is he? Uh, he's probably, he's looking at about 11 foot long. He weighs about 40 pounds. Wow. Okay, so what, what is he doing with his tongue right now? Is that what his, well, the, what he's doing with his tongue, he's flicking that out, and he's collecting little molecules on the end of his tongue. And as he brings it back in, he touches it to the roof of the mouth to a thing called the Jacobson organ, which then translates those molecules into smell. So he's actually smelling with his tongue. Yeah, okay. And right now, he's a snake. He's looking for something to eat, probably. <laughs> Has he been fed? or? Oh, yeah, he's, he's well fed. Yeah. What does he eat? Uh, this guy yeah. usually eats rats, uh, small rabbits, or Good. something like that. Okay. Yeah. Bring him to my house. I have a fever on the There ears. you go. <laughs> <laughs> What's wow. keeping him from just wrapping around you and he's, choking you out right he's now? He's very, very well handleable. Mm -hmm. he, he's been around people for quite a long time. Uh, these types of snakes, especially the albinos, are, are born in captivity mm -hmm. and they're raised from the egg on up to an adult. Mm -hmm. So, if handled properly, they, they can actually make he a pretty is. good bet. Extraordinary. We're going to uh, be talking about uh, a brand new book from the Discovery Channel called the uh, Discovery Channel Awesome Snakeopedia, the complete guide to everything snakes plus lizards and more reptiles. Wow. A little <laughs> bit of everything. A little bit of everything. This yeah. is the book here. Yeah. And uh, we just put this out. It just hit shelves the other day. Um, it's, it's a great book. In fact, it's, hold it up if you yeah. need. I, I know you're handling uh, a snake. Yeah, I'll have but... you do that. But it's, it's built for kids eight years old and up, you know, right when they're really that? starting to read a lot of books. And um, most kids don't know what books are nowadays, but right. we're trying oh. to encourage them to do that. <laughs> and they, they can learn about these things and really turns them on to not just reptiles, but uh, nature in general and how to be good stewards of the planet that we live on. Oh, the photography is just oh, it's incredible. A beautifully stuff. done book, beautifully Great done stuff. book. Yeah. And you're going to run into these if you're if you're walking around uh, little, your neighborhood uh, down where we live. My little bull snake outside my door on Saturday morning. He just it's like he was sitting there waiting for his cup of coffee. Oh yeah. He, he like, where's me Larry? And, well, I found this in a parking lot when I was on my way in. So. Oh, oh yeah, my good. Gosh. Oh, my Did it come out of my car? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a story the other day about uh, I somebody had a, the boa constrictor in their car. Yeah. yeah. Now, do boa constrictors actually live in the wild around here? Don't they? No. No, I, they I would imagine there yeah, was a pet that got away. It's too arid and too dry here. Plus, it gets too cold during the winter yeah. for these guys. Yeah. In their yeah. natural habitat, this snake here would live in a tropical climate? He'd be a tropical snake, and this is a male, so it's about as large as he's going to get. The female uh -huh. of this species can go up to about 18, almost 20 feet long. Mm. Oh, the females are bigger. Though. They are. The females are definitely bigger. Huh. And you'll find that in a lot of snakes, but not all snakes, which is something that we cover in the book. And the same with the tongue and, and all of that good stuff is, is covered in the book. And really, it's, it's very comprehensive. Anything you want to know about snakes, it's, it's in, in there. there. Yeah, it's in there. Now, the little guy I found outside my door is a little bull snake. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people would freak out and maybe kill it, but that's probably not a good idea. That's not a good mm -hmm. idea at all. Snakes, even our venomous snakes, are very beneficial. And they're like any animal. Mother Nature is tough. And if you don't have a job to do, you're not there. So <laughs> evidently, he's there for a reason. And if he's in that area, that means there's food in that area. And yeah. he's over there collecting food. So, yeah. you know, venomous snakes. It's either snakes, the snake or like little mice are running around right. that you don't exactly. want. Exactly. So in even the venomous snakes, if you run across one of them, just go around them. If you need them moved, call animal control or somebody's moving. Don't try to do it. Yeah, we had stuff. a rattler in our yard a year ago. It's the first time I've seen a rattler in yeah. many years that I've lived. Yeah, they're there. actually pretty laid back. And it's, it's when most people are bitten when they're trying to capture or kill the snake mm -hmm. and if you just leave it alone he'll go, Let him go about way and him. yeah he doesn't but, want to have anything to do with us probably exactly he wants nothing at all to do with you tell us about 
the, the, the snake landscape, if you will, around here. You're, you're likely to find some rattlers if you're out in the desert area. If you go out Bull to snakes, the, the, the mountainous common. areas, some of the flat areas, if you go way down the other end of cores, we see a lot of um, western diamondback rattlesnakes down there. So they're likely to crop up, not usually here in the city, but you'll see them once in a while. But here in the city are mainly bull snakes, garter snakes, coach yeah. whip snakes, all non-venomous. Doug, what is your buddy's name? This, his name is Monty, Monty Python. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it. Yeah. Hi, baby. Um, I, I see in the notes here you were responsible for the rediscovery of the northern Mexican garter snake. You, everybody thought it was extinct. Huh? Yeah, we thought that that snake had vanished from New Mexico for about 20 years. And we did, our team went out and we did a three year search for this animal. We finally located one about this time last year uh -huh. along the Gila River, which means a, a whole lot because not only do we save us, we get to save a species, we get a second chance to save a right. species, mm -hmm. but it also kind of helps with plans. They wanted to dam the Gila River and stuff like that. Right. And this may help control that just a little bit. Mm. So it's, it was a great discovery for us. <laughs> it, my, you can't take your eyes off of No, he's here. captivating. <laughs> he is. He's very interesting to watch. Yeah. Um, when, how's their eyesight? What, what do we know about the can snakes see well? It depends on the snake. Um, snakes like this, the ground dwellers and such, they don't see quite well. They, they see shapes, they see you know patterns right. and such, but usually they're, they're going through the jungle, so there's really no line of sight for them to see. Uh -huh. uh, other snakes, uh, some of the tree snakes and stuff, they see very sharp. They see yeah. probably as well as we do. And some can actually see in, in uh, binocular vision, so it's, um, it's pretty cool. Now, this snake kills its dinner by squeezing it. It's a constrictor, right. right. They, they grab it with their teeth. They've got these hooked teeth like little fish hooks. Oh, I see. That way, the more the prey struggles, the harder it is to get away from the snake. Uh -huh. And they wrap around it very, very quickly. And what they do is they squeeze. And as the animal tries to take another breath, they squeeze a little more and a little oh. more and a little more. They don't crush bones or anything like they that. Just, they just suffocate the animal. And, and uh, then they eat it. And then they eat it. And this, a snake like this can eat something three to five times the size of its head. No kidding. Oh, my gosh. Those jaws dis dislocate and, or and they he, do. And when he eats an animal like that, does that kind of keep him fed for a few days? It does. That's the remarkable thing about a snake is they're, they're cold-blooded, for one, which uh -huh. means they, they get their heat from the environment around them. So when he eats a rat, or something like that, he's good. A snake like this in the wild could eat maybe once or twice a year if, if that was all the food available wow. to him. Um, but unlike us, they're not warm-blooded, so they don't have that furnace constantly having to be refueled um, like we do. So these guys can eat, and, and that takes care of them for quite a while. So Monty does, I'm, I'm sorry, Doug, does Monty live at the biopark? No, Monty is, actually lives in a private collection of a, a friend of mine. So, can I pet okay. him? You sure can. You sure can. Hi, babe. Oh, he is cold. Yeah. Wow. Oh, he likes you. He I stopped can... with the tongue <gasps> thing. Yeah. yeah. Does that feel good? Well, he's a gorgeous snake. I have snake a new boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we talk about this type of snake, and we talk about uh, albinism itself in, in the book. And uh, This I'll, is amazing. Yeah, a little bit. If I was a kid and I had a book like this, I would have just been ecstatic. Yeah, hey, look. You yeah. know. And that, that's kind it's of a fascinating world, it. herpetology and reptiles, and uh, it's all there. Uh, Doug, it's great always to have you on the show. Uh, I love coming yes. on. Thank you for bringing on. Monty along. Oh, what we're glad what to a be. visitor. Yeah. We've I'm going to tell my wife, uh, you can now come back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to watch. <laughs> it's okay to watch. Uh, Monty Python and Doug Hodel, <laughs> uh, herpetologist, the curator of herpetology at the Albuquerque Biopark. We'll be back in a moment.